Nelson here, not a lot of time to talk. You see, Crow challenged Tom Servo and I to an Andy Rooney off. No one, no one questions my ability to imitate Andy Rooney. Quiet! It's time for the compulsory round. Each of you will have 10 seconds to Andy Rooney. Your topic? Soup. 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 Crow, begin. Uh, soup is funny. It's not really a meal, nor is it really a first course, because it's mostly made of water. I find soup to be the most watery of foods. Michael J. Nelson! Okay, uh, some soups have beans in them, and there are beans that are as watery as soaps, but they're not soups. I don't trust soups on the whole, no more than I trust stews. Tom Servo! Well, there are French soups with bread in them. I don't really understand that. To me, it's arbitrary. Whether you put bread in the soap or soap in the bread, you still have sloppy bread. Freestyle! I was I thinking was about you exchange, I got day. so angry. I mean, they, they, they don't really have to do anything to keep my dog all so so hard. hard. Into I suspect the time! Time. Like, um, The results when we return! Results, results are funny. Results are funny. I have my choice of my ones I fall down the water. But it's a real thing. I was saying, I said, the winner is, you guys shut up! Jeez. Ever notice when Gypsy gets mad? Sometimes when Gypsy gets mad, she gets mad. Who the hell are they the last one of you? Oh, hey, Pearl's calling. You ever notice sometimes when she calls, the light flashes fast, and other times it flashes slow, and... Other times it's kind of a slow fast. Kind of I know it's a pearl sometimes. Oh, I get it. You're impressionating Mickey Rooney. Cute. Okay, look, Nelberger, we're really busy. We're just getting moved in. I'm going to rule the world, and I do not have time to get into it right now. So, just a brief overview. I'm going to rule the world. That about covers Say, Lawgiver, what should I do with this box of liver ass? Oh, that's my box of live rats. Oh. Uh, put, put them in the basement. Live rats? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's here, it's here. Your order from Spiegel just Good. arrived. <laughs> my world domination starter kit. Lovely. Yes, contained in this box is the very means by which I, Pearl Forrester, will take over the puny whimpering world and command its inhabitants to kiss my grit. This, the red hot metal of destruction, the cold blue steel of this. Uh, this, what? What is this? Where the dir uh, directions? Oh, here they are. Uh, congratulations on your purchase of a doomsday machine. Some assembly required. Oh, and oh, they didn't great. send the That's thing just, they, for they this. They didn't send the thing. thing. Oh, oh, it says is, right here thing shipped but... separately. Oh, 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 for the love of me. Oh, oh, rat, rat, everybody, rat. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Cool. Cool, man. Must have been sent here by mistake. We, we gotta get rid of it. No, it's ours. Yeah. Well, the crow, it's dangerous. But we love it. Come on, Mike. It's our glowing thing. We yeah. get to keep it. Come on. <laughs> you guys. 
guys. I really need that thing for my thing. You know, sometimes I feel like you guys don't want me to take over the world. Well, never mind how you've hurt me. I still want you to have your movie. It's called Phantom Planet. You're welcome. How about you harm a single one of God's precious creatures? So help me, I'll kill you. You know, I think I better send this back to Pearl. No, don't let her take her thing away. We'll take care of it and feed it and stuff. Careful, whatever it is, it's very dangerous. Oh, so radioactive immediately equals bad to you. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it later. It's movie time. I can't believe the way you overreact sometimes. That thing. <laughs> it's gotta go back. Okay. It's a vocal leader. Oh. Uh, Grandpa tried to use the microwave again. Pat Buchanan's first day as president. Since the splitting of the atom only a few decades ago, and through his God given genius of science, uh -huh. man at last has succeeded in penetrating further and further into the unknown vastness of space. Whoa. The moon has become the launching base for advanced exploration. Of the moon. From this pivotal point, astronauts, at the risk of their lives, set out to conquer nature's mysterious forces. Like this granola. Yet many questions remained unanswered. Do? What is his Earth in relation to the inconceivable number of other worlds? Well, philosophical. Is his speed truly the fastest? Well, I think... His the... achievements the greatest? Well, it's difficult. Or is he a mere unimportant piece of driftwood? Well, there are several... Of... ...in the vast ocean of the universe? You know, is he a loser? Could there be life similar to our own on other planets? What on Kondraki? Is it not possible that atmospheric conditions of relative environments control their shapes and forms? Stop asking things! If so... Would they be giants, or Punks. could perhaps the opposite be true? <gasps> could their intellect have reached a scientific level far above man's dream? <clears throat> what then will the future reveal? Um, Lycra! This story you are about to witness is only... A first draft. ...the beginning. Well, that said, enjoy your crappy sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah. Somehow the answer to all its questions is big white guys in jumpsuits. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Log entry. Hmm. Pegasus 3, March 16th, 1980. Oh, our old future. Captain Leonard Pilot, Lieutenant Webb Navigator. This is the seventh and last day of space reconnaissance research, Flight 361, from United States Air Force Lunar Base 1. We're really sick of each other. We are 21,000 miles from base, bearing at 270 degrees. We're cranky and a little tired. Two, three minutes. Azimuth at plus 46 degrees, 46 degrees, 50 oh minutes, ecliptic. Crew cut at 0.5 inches. On routine successive approximation by trajectory computer using data from the space position recorder. Earl, are you going to shut up for even 30 seconds on this trip? It's quiet and lonely out here. Thanks, Earl. What am I? And frankly, we'll be happy to get back to that dreary old moon. Makes you feel really huge and significant, doesn't it? We're almost a degree off trajectory, Captain. Equipment check's okay. Must be an outside acceleration force. What do you know? You're just an intern. So you can just take a sharp left in space. <laughs> it's something approaching fast. It looks crunchy. I'm setting up auto evasive pattern. <laughs> A large planetoid object is on a direct collision course with us. We are under 11 G's exterior acceleration and have no control whatsoever. Sorry, could we not tape this? I'm panicking right now. Those nooks and crannies really hold the butter. Damn, it's deep fried. Weird, we're in space and I can hear you scream. Phantom Planet is quilted for softness. <laughs> Cheap. Ah. 
Starring these proud representatives of the 1950s. Yes, they all drove Chevys, they all voted for Eisenhower, and they all thought Speedy the Alka Seltzer was hilarious. Oh, Richard Keel, a real star for once. Let us now proclaim the mystery of Dolores' face. Honey bunches of death. <laughs> oh, it was nice of the credits to let those things through. Oh, the guy who did interplanetary sound was named Walter Dick. See? Walter Dick. So, so how is that significant? Well, nothing. Just his name is Walter Dick. <laughs> well, thanks, Chris. So the credits are just going to get tinier and tinier until the movie's over then. Well, movie, I sure hope you can justify all this personnel and help you. Stupid the universe, quit expanding! Attack of the killer peanut brittle. Hey, the same guy who wrote The Messiah. <laughs> Fred Gebhardt wrote The Messiah? I didn't know the name before. Handel, what the hell's now, come on, you're just recycling names at this point, movie. I guess focus groups demanded more credits. What happened to the fluffy absorbent credits? I like those. Today, the moon narrowly missed hitting a man's eye like a big pizza pie. Scientists believe that's Amore. Honey, get your moon model out of the living room. They make him use the doggy door. Sir, I'd been testing the pressure equipment for the Mars project. Forget about that now, Chapman. You leave tomorrow morning. The general wants someone with your experience. I don't know whether to feel flattered or not. I don't. What exactly will I be looking for? A floating space monster? <laughs> this is no joke, Frank. I wish it were. Don't make me hurt you. Sorry, sir. You know how rumors move around this base. Well, it's one of the things we hope that you'll dispel. Well, you're the colonel. I'm the weird guy. I'll take a crack at anything once. I'm glad you said that, soldier. And that's about all you'll get, Frank. One crack. All I need, sir. Jeez, just blast off, I guess. Don't wait for a countdown or anything. Jeez. <laughs> Does this tepid little scene really deserve... 18,000 miles out at 270 degrees azimuth and 47 degrees ecliptic. Speed, 4.6 miles per second. I'm not listening. Check. Computer guidance on. Stability course on. Direction of rocket support off. Directional rocket starboard off. Set to automatic. Check. Party tape. Check. Well, that does it, Captain. Honey. We can relax a bit now. Sweetie. Takeoff's always the same. My heart pounds like a sledgehammer. Da 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 Every year of my life, I grow more and more convinced <laughs> that the wisest and best is to fix our attention on the good and on the beautiful. Don't hit him. He'll just take the time to look at it. Yeah, some guy, McConnell. <laughs> Lunar Base 1 to Pegasus 4. Spaceship, now with gentle glide applicator. What's our last time from base? 14 hours, 22 minutes, and 30 seconds. You could stay up here another 14 hours and still see nothing. Even 1,400 hours. Even 14 million. About all we can do, though. Are you sure we're still on course? Why? We're underwater. Well, I have an idea. Turn to 278 degrees azimuth. You're mad! 047 degrees ecliptic. Yes, sir. Changing course to 278 degrees azimuth, hold 47 degrees ecliptic. Lansfield tells us to charter the same course Pegasus 3 took. Well, that's fine, but I don't think we'll get anywhere. Knowing us. This strange planet dashes about like it's supposed to. It figures we won't find it around here. So we're changing course. Lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Precisely. You with me? Like I said, you're the captain. Unfortunately. I'll take I... a new reading. Thanks, Ray. You know, Captain, every year I think more and more of the goodest and the nicest and bestest that we can be. Yeah, whatever. Hey, it's an adult rocket ship. <laughs> yeah, 
You know, Captain... Shut up, I, Ray! I go nuts out here just waiting for something to happen. Wanna play asteroids? You seem pretty much at ease. You know, Captain, I... Well, I figure it's just the same as fishing. You gotta be patient and wait. Drink lots of beer. <laughs> Electrostatic meters going haywire. Lunar Base 1 to Pegasus 4. Can you read me? Over. Well, have you been published? Pegasus 4 to Lunar Base 1. We read you. Over. You are completely off course, Pegasus 4. Check your position immediately. Well, you'll get such a spanking. E computer and spectrometer out. Pegasus 4 to Lunar Base 1. We are aware of being off course. Cannot explain at present. We are entering a heavy magnetic field. Several instruments are out and I'm afraid others are going. And it's not my fault. Give us our exact position. Over. Pegasus 4, you are completely boned. Cannot hear you, Lunar Base 1. Over. He's so pretty. Changing to the man control. That's a good and beautiful thing to do, sir. Visio. Ach! Someone on the mirror flushed. <laughs> you know, Captain. I'm scared! Boy, that was close. Yeah, and I'm afraid it isn't over yet. Roving gangs of meteors terrorize the galaxy. Out of the way, spaceship punk! We're on a semi closing course with them. Screen one's fading fast. What about the infrared detector? That's out too. The thing we can do is turn it 9 0 degrees to the shower's path. More meteors are coming, it's our only chance. That will be to 311 degrees azimuth and minus 12 degrees ecliptic. Yeah, fine, just turn left. Here they come. Prepare the milk. This is it. Don't. I filled my pants, sir. In fact, I think I filled yours, too. <laughs> is over. I'll see a lot of spots. Now those are ionized trails. They'll persist for a while. Well, let's hope for those dragons. These instruments out. There won't be any way to tell if they're coming from another direction. The trick now is to get back to the moon. Permission to talk in flowery prose again, sir? I think we'll make it. Yeah, I know you think that. Okay, Ray, let's go through a tight B check. Right. Hop up on the table. Cabin pressure? 20 coming up. Petro port? Tawny port, sir. Positive. Better starboard. Positive. Main circuit one. Good and beautiful. Check. Negative. He looks so hurt. Main two. Negative. How can you say that to me? Now let's try the auxiliaries. Main one. Negative. Ooh. Main two. Cool, huh? Watching them check things of which we don't know what they are. <laughs> That's not in the circuits. You know, the meteors must have smacked into the propulsion elements. Our feed lines. Yeah, we're lucky. Well, there's only one way to find out. Looks like it. Yep, strip down, oil up. You know, oh, boy, what? There's one thing sure. What's that? They knew what they were doing when they forced us to go through those space drills dozens of times. If I remember correctly, you had a different opinion. <laughs> Okay, don't rub it in. That was a bad and unbeautiful thing to say, sir. Would it be really that much of a problem to have human-sized doors? Lipstick of the gods! Man, when he starts talking about a stamp collection, I think it's gotta get outside for a break. Look, there's the problem. The dryer's leaking. In or out, kids? What are we, heating the whole universe? We gotta get the model number for the repairman. <laughs> I miss the Earth so much. I miss my wife. Uh, could you get your butt out of my face, Ron? Good thing there's so much gravity out in space. Soundtrack by Percy Faith and his orchestra. Hmm, that towel we stuffed in that crack really isn't doing the trick. I can't believe you left your tether ropes in Lloyd's cabin. Um, I'm not good at this, sir. I'm only good at fruity philosophical speeches. Don't move, Ron. There are two giant eyeballs on your back. <sighs> you smell good, sir. Like Vitalis and bacon. Oh, go, Stanley! 
It's a sperm whale powered ship, sir. You have to watch out for his blowhole. <laughs> We're terrible astronauts. Hey, look. It's the interior of our rocket. Cool. You can see where we sit. This looks like it. The retro rocket feed lines must be cut. <laughs> And the left has a Kirby Puckett esque butt. <laughs> Mosquitoes are bad tonight. Yeah, it used to be great when you could fix those rockets yourself with just a crescent wrench before all that computer stuff. Frank, your airline's broken. Frank! Motion in the ocean. His air hose broke. Come on, Captain Load. <laughs> I'm coming, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I'm coming. Over. It's Black Bart and his gang. Get away from that rocket, you varmints! Okay, break. Back to position one and rest. Since you're gonna die anyway, Ron, I'm gonna stick you right in the meat locker, okay? Ah, uh, well, I'm glad you're safe, sir, but could you lend me... Ah, oh, never mind, I'm fine. It's okay, I'll handle it. Yep, just gotta, uh... Oh, I'm fine, I'm... If you could just prop the door open, it'll... Nope, that's... that's fine. Could, could you just give a message to my wife and kids if you have the time? Well, never mind. Yes, our Father, <laughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hey, sir. Well, no, what's Mike. Going? Every year of my life, I grow more and more convinced that the wisest and the best is to fix our attention on the good and the beautiful. If you just take the time to look at it, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm fixing my attention on a nut goodie and a picture of Anna Nicole Smith. All right. The good and the beautiful. Sure. Right. And uh, how's it going? Well, not good, Mike. I'm unconvinced that the Smith goodie combination represents the perfect balance between the good and the beautiful. Yeah, I, I see your point. What if, uh, what if I substituted a picture of Tawny Katane for oh, the good beautiful? Idea. How would that work out? Let's try it out here. Hmm. No. 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 Tawny Katane is all right, but now the good looks well, kind of scrawny. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see your point. But what if I substituted this plate of sour broughton for the good? Uh, huh? Good and substantial. Well, what let's give think? it a whirl. What do you think? Yes. 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 I think it's the perfect balance of good and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You know what? what? Even I grow more and more convinced that the wisest and the best is to fix our attention on the good and the beautiful. Represented by a plate of sour rotten and picture of Tawny Katane. Right. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. Uh, you wouldn't want to try Tiffany Amber Thyssen and Ace Florentine, would you? Hmm, that's a little out there for me. You got the spinach and the Thyssen. I'm not sure that would work. A little while. cheese and fell asleep in the TV room again. I hate it when I do that. Man. The USS Pencap. An even shorter door. Would they design this ship for Danny DeVito? <laughs> I guess I could have helped him when he was floating away, but I was just so beat. Oh. Ray. My tummy's feeling better. Ray. Could I have soda crackers and 7-Up? Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna puke and it's gonna float around. Ooh, the headrest is made of hot dog buns. Okay, let's take roll call. Me, here, Ray, dead. Okay, good, that's clearer now. Well, I have all the tang for myself. <laughs> the Leica dropping is headed right for him. Good morning, Mr. Oddface. <laughs> oh, he really pitted out his space. Captain suit. Frank Chapman. Pilot, take a score. My ship is being drawn toward an asteroid. Well, I let my ship be drawn to an asteroid. The instrument's completely out of operation. Navigator McConan. Lost. Well, I lost him. I cannot read my position. I'm going to try to land. I don't think I'll make it. 
If I do, I'll continue recording. In short, I failed. Hey, look, you can see the rocket's fuse. It's a French burnt peanut off the port bow. It's extra crispy. Oh, no, 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 wait. It's the original recipe. Oh, no. It comes with slaw. Oh, my contacts. Ooh, my contacts, too. It's a movie. You guys don't even wear contacts. Who knew that Hall's vapor action could be so powerful? Ooh. Maybe they'll run into Wallace and Gromit on a cheese tour. Jeez, how did I manage to land without that mincing little co-pilot jabbering about the good and the beautiful? Well, better deploy my rugged, handsome independence now. Where's the hookup for my airstream? Scylla and Charybdis, actual footage. Whoops, my keys are still in the door! I claim this land for strange-looking blonde men everywhere. He needs a posture, pal. Ugh, turns out it's not funny at all when you fart in a spacesuit. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for men. Ow, ow. It's a spastronaut. Man, I am so far from the terminal. I landed in a sea monkey bowl. Ah, oh yeah. Don't fall down. I just remembered that from astronaut training. Is he waiting for AAA to come help him? It's a hell of a sand trap to be stuck in. Yes, Foster Brooks in outer space. Wow, this place is great for my sinuses. Seems to be entering heavy magnetic fields. Some of the instruments are off, others are going. Visual. You are completely off course, Pegasus. Or check your position immediately. Congratulations, Mrs. Astronaut. It's a boy, boy. Wake up, Frank. You wet the bed. Frank, you'll have to take third grade again. Frank, this is Northwest Collection Agency. Do you value your credit rating? I'm afraid you're not 7-Eleven timber, Frank. Frank, Frank, you're the worst party clown we ever had. I wish it were. Come out, come out. Are you a good spaceman or a bad spaceman? Let's put shaving cream in his hand and tickle his nose. Come on, I took care of that Gulliver clown. I'm just gonna beat up his left eye. A brace of microscopic order leaves. <laughs> Boy, I'm hungry, and they're right there, and they're snack size. Sir, you landed on our hospital. Uh, hang on, let me just uh, adjust your contact lens here. Colony of tiny mimes. If his zip pops, we're all dead. Ow, my cornea! Cut it out. Hey Steve, do wipe out. <gasps> He's gonna sneeze. Wow, he's gonna shape like Dr. Beverly Crusher. You gotta try an ultra relaxed fit spacesuit. You are the great god wide hip. <laughs> uh, sir, you need a Zantac or something? Somebody rubbing a cat against a zither? What is that? We've got to start a basketball team, you guys. Use one of you guys to pick my teeth, that okay? Hey, grab his visa and charge tiny things. Run up a huge tiny bill. Well, we can hollow him out and make condos out of him. The helmet is open. The giant is getting smaller. You want to become our size? Finally, I'm a size eight. Oops, no, size seven. Size six. Size three. No, it's too small now. 
Well, you chug ten boxes of Slim Fast, that's what you can do. Well, what were these guys doing before he arrived? <laughs> help! I'm being smothered in my own jockey shorts! Help! <laughs> What's he doing in there? Stop it! <laughs> that have to shrink twice as much as the rest of me. Yesterday I was a bold astronaut. Today I'm a 12 count party shrimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just put me in your crash and ignore me. Ron, why don't you go in there and mop up for us, huh? Asshole Fugard is scared. I'm a giant. Roar. I hope this planet is tolerant of nude people. Hey, hey, buddy, where's your V-neck smock, huh? Let's go in again. Okay, option, flood the zone on three, go. He should stand trial. You must take him to Cecil. Man, it stinks in here. It smells like sweat and hair oil. Oof. Ah. Oh, something fleshy's touching my lower back. I just wanted to borrow a cup of sand. He's an alien. He only has one. We must bring him to pilot. I could have took him. We will begin the trial. Yes, Cecil. We must command the fire of this... Oh, wait, that's no. the wrong name. Hello, Han. Welcome to Hawaii. Thank you, Cecil. Bring in the jurors. Or the cocktail waitresses, whichever you prefer. Man, you could just bring in jurors all day, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, yeah. yes. Will Ipsalata step forward? Ora Petri, you are charged with treason. Here's my toenail clippings. Everyone gets one Skittle. One, Debbie. Yearning at the Bray. Lily Taylor. Kitty Carlisle. Kate Winslet. Elizabeth Montgomery. Call the prisoner. Bring in the prisoner. Da 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 da. Stand here, in front of our leader and our judge. You mean the old guy in a dress? <laughs> Is the prisoner from another world ready to hear the charges against him? Charges. What charges? Yeah, the charges against you. I will you. ask the questions. So pipe down, mister. Are you ready to stand trial? It seems I have no choice. Rose and Valerie screaming for the gallery. But first I want to know what I'm charged with. Eyes front, Mr. Horny Pants. We'll let you know in time. What are you called? Chapman. Chapstick Chap. Frank Chapman. What is your occupation in the world from which you come? I'm a captain in the Air Force of the United States, a country on Earth. Space Exploration Wing. Ooh, exploration. Yes. Oh, that's but you must know about us. You speak our language. We do not speak it. We belch it. But here on Rayton. Rayton? Yes, Rayton. The name of our planet. Rayton Chong. Here we are able to translate all languages through voice tone waves. Why all these explanations? Let's just stomp them. Let us go on with the charges. You're right, Heron. This is no time for explanation. So let me explain. <laughs> Man from Earth, you are accused of causing injury to one of our people. I thought I was being attacked and I defended myself. With courage and newtness. I didn't want to come to your world. I lost control of my ship. It was like being pulled toward your planet by an enormous gravitational force. Thank you. You were. When you came into our path of travel. Path of travel. Uh, is that the path you travel on? Phantom Planet. We managed just in time to control your landing by releasing the pressure in our space warp. I don't understand. There are many things you will not understand here. Big and obvious doorknob. Maybe in time you shall. In time? That is correct. The jury will now vote and find you guilty or not guilty for inflicting injury on a Rayton man. 
We find him guilty, guilty, G-U-Y-L-T-Y. Guilty, guilty, G-U-Y-L-T-Y. Woo! Yay! The guilty party will receive a dream trip to sunny Cancun. Inherit the wow! The verdict, Judge. We wrote it out on our eyebrow pencil shavings. Uh, I'll take a peppermint one, I guess. I find you guilty as charged. You are now a free subject of Rayton. The jury is dismissed. That is all. You just simmer down, mister. You are now a free subject of Rayton. That is not all. Listen, I don't know what kind of a place this is, but you must have some kind of law here. This planet pulled me to it. I didn't come here by choice. But being here... You cannot be permitted to leave. <laughs> we must keep our security at any cost. <laughs> so, I must pronounce you guilty. Yeah, what Dad says. No penalties will be lodged against you. But you must become a subject of Rayton. You get a dress like mine. Trial is concluded. Nothing is concluded. What is this? First I'm found guilty of something that's not my fault, and then I'm set free. Well, free to go where? Back to my world six inches tall? Don't worry. No harm will come to you. Just don't step in our many bear traps. I'm Liara, mm -hmm. Sesson's daughter. I'll show you to your quarters. <coughs> oh, come. We'll talk on the way. And Wednesday Adams is crestfallen. What has happened to me? You mean your size? Well, our atmosphere, together with some acceleration from our gravitational control, has reduced you to normal. Normal? Normal for us. You see, everything here is in proportion to our planet's size. Really? We know several huh? worlds that have creatures larger or smaller according to the size of their world. You're explaining it to a garden slug. Do you feel any different? No, but it's not exactly funny to think that someone on Earth could carry me about in their pocket. Oh, well, that would never happen. The, the oxygen in your atmosphere would restore you immediately to your regular size. So people are just balloons? Yes. But either way, it wouldn't matter. You'll never see your world again. Ha-ha. <laughs> Burned you good, Astro Boy. Hey, dark-haired friends seeing anyone? Man, there's no ham left. Nothing yet. No, sir. No contact for two days. Lunch is ruined. I'll wait another 24 hours. Then, with or without orders, I'm sending out a search party. And that's why I'm dressed as Quentin Crisp. You wanted to see me? No. Yes. Will you excuse me? Well, there seems to be a problem with your credit card, sir. <laughs> we must talk about your future. Plastics, Benjamin. Your future on Rayton. My future on Rayton? I want to talk about getting back to my world, back to Earth. <laughs> I'm afraid that is impossible. You might as well accept your fate, your fate of being one of us. Being one of us, you must be productive in one way or another. Well, what is it you want me to do? You must help us to keep spaceships from your world from landing here. But that's my only hope of getting back. Don't go there, man. Forget about it. Sesame rules us and we are content. I'm filled with joy, okay? Now, can't we get on with this, Sesame? Aaron is hasty. We all are. Our lives have been changed so much. I would like you to become acquainted with... Urban life. Our ways. Later, you may choose a wife. Wives are men here, by the way. Yara. Or Zeta. Mm -hmm. Zeta cannot speak, but she is a fine woman. Well, between the two, it would be difficult to make a choice. Choose her. Choose her. It is no problem. Why both? You may take your time, but once you've made your choice, remember... If you touch them, they explode. It must not be taken lightly. You must be hungry. Come with me. They are. Go now and learn our ways. And perhaps you may help us with our problems. You can decide about this later. Now you need to eat and rest. But I want to stay and listen to the old guy. <laughs> Ooh, that's her personal record for getting nude. That's amazing. Ooh, God, now go. Yay! 
Yeah, it's all finished. Now it's just time for the decals. So cool, man. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Wow, what are you... Oh, Pearl's calling. Uh, uh, Mike! Pearl's calling! Where the heck is he, anyway? I don't know. I... Oh, wait a minute. I was supposed to help him with something, wasn't huh. I? No, huh. no. I can't remember. Well, I'm sure he'll cover for me. Yeah, he usually <laughs> Anyway, does. Yeah. I'm going to put on some flames. Cool. Maybe I was thinking of putting on a skull. Oh, yeah. yeah. Double yes, F into triple Z. Z. I simply don't understand that. Z. This is like written in... Hello, toys. Oh. As you can see, our doomsday device is coming along quite nicely, and soon the world will kneel before me and I... What was that? I don't know. It, it, it sounds like... It sounds like some horrible disembodied spirit, but... It's getting closer. This haunted tomb of a castle has produced some ancient hellish hellspawn to, to wreak vengeance on us on for our wicked ways. I'm not ready to die. I just want to ruin the world. Is that wrong? Oh, it, it is among us. Oh, Pearl, oh, me. Yeah, embrace me in this moment of oblivion. Oh, oh we do. I'm tired. <laughs> I feel like I'm dragging a safe. I need a nap. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Ain't that the berries? I've been dragging this chain all over the dang castle. <laughs> no wonder I'm so tired. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brain guy? Madam? Get the pipe wrench and then murder Bobo, won't you? Glad to. Thank you. What are you looking at? Get back into that theater, you! Yeah, then I'm gonna throw on some Baby Moon hubcaps and I just oh, get Oh man, that'll so be so. Cool. What? What, 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 what? There's Mike, he's out there! Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I was supposed to keep an eye on him. So. <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh, wow, man. hey Mike, better get your can in here, it's movie time! Hey, stop messing around, Mike, <laughs> come on! <laughs> Eating the wall. This is good. What is it? Well, I think it's the equivalent of your breadfruit. We made it chemically for you since nothing grows here on this planet. Hi, Mike. Oh, here. Hey, how you doing? doing myself? It's good for you. Wait till you came around again. Thanks, you guys. You need it. Say nothing grows here. Okay. Well, then how do you exist? Well, our bodies are so constructed that we need very little food because of the air we breathe. Next scene, go. Better now? Well, my neck's a little sore. I hope so. Yes. But I'd like to get out of here. Could you untie my legs? You're a strange one, Frenchman. I'm a strange one. You're a girl. What about everybody else? And don't call me Frenchman. My name is Frank Chapman. Two words. First word sounds like um, I'm, I'm a... Yes. Frank Chapman. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so rough. It's just that well, this is so new to me. Ladies and words and stuff. You know what I'd like to do if I had a choice? Mm -hmm. What? I'd like to return to my ship. Yeah, we'll return to my butt. Well, that's impossible. Then you see, I'm still a prisoner. Not at all. You're free to go anywhere here on Rita. All 50 feet. Except to my ship. Your rocket is no longer on this planet. It was towed. It was sent off last night while you were sleeping. Words are just bouncing off his skull. <laughs> your rescue ship is in the countdown phase, sir. They're waiting for your final operation orders. Is he listening to the ball game? Let me through to the captain of the rescue ship on launching. God, I love Carmel. Beecher, this is Lansfield. So? Yes, Colonel. Beecher, your final instructions are being teletyped on your recorder. Yes, sir. As you know, something unusual must have happened to Chapman and McCormick. Well, the rocket tipped over, sir. I don't mind telling you that it's of greatest importance to space travel that we find out exactly what happened to these two men. So, blast off, and good luck. We'll do our best, Colonel. Don't tell him that. <laughs> Anonymous, similar guys, away! So, which part of the universe you want to search first? Wow, this is almost as good as 2001. Nails driven into your eyes. 
You know, other captain, every year I become more and more convinced. Shut up. Wow, no one told me about the black ice out here in space. Oh, sorry about depressurizing the cabin. Next time I'll warn you. All NASA flights are non-smoking now. God. Ooh, excuse me, those lentils. Space batch. Open the door. Open the door. Oh. Hey, collecting for the March of Dimes is complicated in space. Hey, they have a nice mud room. Denise, come on, the car's running. I cannot rate my position. I'm going to try to land. Denise, come on! I don't think I'll make it. If I do, I'll continue recording. Whoa, it's like a garbage ship in here. Captain Frank Chapman, pilot, Pegasus 4. And crew killer. My ship is being drawn toward an asteroid. Instrument's completely out of operation. Sorry, I ran here. Man, arithmetic is just hard. Um, some? I can't work under these conditions. Gorgeous women waiting to serve my every whim. I must know more about the directional flight machine. When the time comes. Well, the time has come. The walrus said. I want to speak to Sesson. And right now. Stupid leech woman. Very well. So looks like Psalm is rapidly approaching Non. Mm -hmm. But I think belted at the waist gives me a slimmer look, don't you agree? I, 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 oh. Father, Frank Chapman wishes to speak with you. Do you want to talk about Liara? Mr. President. That isn't what I came here to discuss. My work has reached a stage and I need to know more about your gravity control. Anyway, the blouse is on sale at Talbot's today only. It's soon. How do we know he's not a spy for the Solarites? You are too distrusting, Heron. Are you a spy for the Solarites? All right. You may see it. Although I don't know why in the hell you'd want to. Let me just lift my skirt. There it is. Ta-da. Now we shall dive into the mosh pit. This came out of Lyndon Johnson's gallbladder. Incredible animal. But how? The high density of our planet made it possible for us to advance gravity and therefore anti-gravity theories. It's beyond me. Einstein was working on this problem, but he died before he could complete his investigation. Yeah, I'm trying to work here. What causes Rayton's high density? The atoms on this planet have narrower electronic orbits than the atoms on most other planets. The smaller they become, easier it is for us to control and take advantage of positive and negative gravity. But why is Rayton getting smaller? This planet is slowly using up the energy that holds the atomic particles together. Huh. You mean you might disintegrate into nothing? Yes, someday. When you're older. But it will not be in our time. Uh, well, I guess it's the same as on Earth. We don't seem to worry that our sun might be cooling off in many millions of years. Yeah, the danger for us is that sudden bursts of concentrated heat directed on our radar. Oh, radon sure, you're going to get that. Oh, yeah. Might suddenly speed up the process of time. You think that's possible? We have enemies who want our knowledge of gravity and who know our weakness. You're expecting an attack? When you have enemies, you always expect an attack. Now, quiet down. I'm putting my hands over things here. <laughs> Dud service. Eek! Sorry. Yeah, he's just out for his morning swagger. Oh, oh yeah, take it off. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> Sleeping on a big slab of tuna steak here. Hello. We're closed. How do you sign beat it, loser? I'm sorry my waist is so big for you. You want to play? I got a banana seat bike. I'm going to take a walk. Stir fry some vegetables. Could you join me? We could look at some walls. Come on. 
Well, I was kind of doing some stuff. I got a lot to... Well, okay, I'll take a walk with you. You know, this is the first time I've had a chance to talk to you alone. It's almost like you've been avoiding me or something. Let's just walk over here to the other end of the planet. So, do you collect anything or do you know things? His helmet is now a major makeout spot on the planet. How is it you're more different than the others? Or less the same, is what I'm saying. No, I don't mean your silence. I, I mean you're warmer, uh, more sensitive. I like potatoes! That wasn't really a question. Because I know you can't answer. So I'll keep talking and talking. I just wanted you to know how I feel. A strange world. Anyway, let's get busy! I don't want to hurt Leah. Yes, I don't. No, I do. What? I like you. And you can't say you don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check out my armpits. <laughs> I just smeared atomic bomb in his underpants. Look at this guy. George Schultz is more expressive. I have charges to make against the Earthman Chapman. The old guy stoned on beta blockers. He is imposing himself <laughs> both on Liara, your daughter, and the mute girl Zeta. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an insult to Liara. You know I love her. And a direct insult to me. Mm -hmm. I am asking, rather... Blandly. I am demanding your permission to challenge him to the duel. Hey, Betty and Veronica. These two are bothering me with their lady things. You sent for me? Yes. I have reports about you that are not good. Which you're causing much trouble. What am I supposed to have done now? You are forcing your attentions on Liara. And then on the mute girl Zeta. That's not true. Why don't you ask them? He lies. Silence. I'm the one in the velvet dress. Is it true? Has he forced himself or his attentions upon you? That means yes, oh yes, please help me. Why would she admit it? Perhaps she's afraid of it. Being mute, she's unable to defend herself. Maybe she's protecting me. Henry Fonda. Listen, I'm not going to be put on trial or questioned by you or anyone else for something I haven't done. You know, buddy, I don't like you. Maybe it's a carryover from Earth and not good taste. But I'd like to hang one on you. Chapman. Would you hang one on me? <laughs> Taron has challenged you to the duel of Brayton. Do you accept his challenge? A duel for what? What kind of a duel? This guy doesn't look very honest to me. A duel of bravery. Yeah, fine, Lara. Anyway. You know, Mr. Sesson, maybe this duel business is a good idea. <laughs> Might clear the air a little. Lacquer hair. So how do we go about it? Later, they went about it. Uh, you didn't need to take your shirts off. Aaron? You're a blue waterfowl. You know the rules for the duel of Rayton. But for him... I'll have to explain and show the results. Chapman, come here. He's showing off his Ray Bolger physique. Those are gravity plates that we've had placed here. Their intensity is so high that any object or any person placed on any one of them would immediately disintegrate. Well, kind of a dumb purchase, really. Here, let me show you. Well, let me just dry my hands first. This is a meatloaf we just made. The audience is hemorrhaging. Yeah. Oh, Nolium Tile of Doom. So my dad has one of those. The duel of Rayton is one of physical strength and skill. Mm. You will use this rod. The rod, please. And attempt to push your opponent on top of one of the gravity plates. You saw what happened to the rock. I shot in it with Nicholas Cage. Suck it in, Tiny. Get ready. What I'm saying is, let's get ready to rumble. Put the combat rod in position. <laughs> Jeez, the old guy calls it his combat rod? I can't believe it. It's disgusting. <laughs> no. Don't oh, wait. Think that is that what he's talking about? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> you also have to fight around our bike rack. They stole that from Al Pacino's football field. <laughs> Uh, we're just going to pour some concrete while you're fighting. Want to just Indian wrestle instead? You know, in a few minutes, they'll be the best of friends slugging back Tranya. 
we really got to cooperate to kill each other. <laughs> Time, good match. At my signal, you will start the duel. There can be no quarter called and no quarter given. We need them for the laundry. The fate of the victim is in the hands of the victor. The moment has come. At my light signal, you will proceed. Uh, was that the signal? It was kind of dim. Push! 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 Yeah, this will be on TV if they ever have ESPN 6. You can still see combat rod fights in Mexico City. <laughs> and now, flood the arena. Did we tell you about that? And you know, combat rod used to be great. Now there's just too much money in it. Yeah, it's just a business now. Yeah, too bad. Push him on the gravity plate. Push him on the gravity plate. Early cheese heads. I'm shirtless and it's driving them mad. Ice the pig. There, there. <laughs> I don't want to kill you. So can you do it? Did. Except that time you ate the last synthesized breadfruit. That really cheesed me off. The totals on the board are correct. Right. Thank you for attending Pleated Skirt Day here at Combat Rod Park. Park. You're gonna put your shirt back on. Yay! Hey, girls, you want to make a me sandwich? Huh? Wow, she flexible. Add that to the Kama Sutra. Neither one of them are touching the ground. Let me show you the china pattern I registered for, and you're going to love the kitchen border I picked out. Why didn't you kill him? I didn't want to. I don't believe in it. In this case, killing him would have accomplished nothing. But Heron wouldn't have shown you mercy. He'd have killed you because he wants me. But I don't love him. I love you. If you'd felt anything for either one of us, you could have stopped this duel. What? You know what I think? I think you were waiting to see which one of us won and then take the one that was left over. What? No, Liar, I don't love you. I don't even know if I like you. You get me going and all, well, but... Let me tell you this. You can't make someone love you. It's got to come naturally. You, you can't force it, you can't command it. Well, that's what the judge told me. If you do that, you'll never find it. Chicken droppings for the soul. This, this whole thing is, is like a nightmare to me. I miss my people. Well, I've got to make some attempt to get back. And if you feel anything for me, you'll try to help me. I feel indifference tinged with disgust. Well, perhaps you're right. You are correct, strange-faced Lilliputian Astro Boy. <laughs> Maybe I can help you. Trust me completely. <laughs> okay. Well, that went really well, I think. Can you smell this? Does it smell kind of fishy to you? Hey, did you use this to shave your legs? <laughs> As you said, I don't want to kill you. Just thought I'd wake you up and tell you that. Good night. You know, I think I could understand your somewhat quaint language if I were on your earth a little. Why don't you kill me? I'm a loser, baby. You didn't kill me. You had the chance. Well, what about the knife? This isn't exactly what I'd call a friendly visit. Ow, ow, ow. This is a scene between two cement blocks. Oh, no, they're human. Yeah. You help me. I have a plan whereby I might help you to leave our planet. Perhaps it will work. I don't see how this is possible. What about my size? Well, you can be a bowling trophy model. Hmm. I inspected your giant suit. And the oxygen tank holds air from your own world. Now, isn't that right? Yes, of course, but why? No, never mind that. It's not important. Don't trouble your odd-shaped little head about it. You see, the whole plan is based on the theory that your people are searching for you. Now, I must get you back before they attempt to find you here. I know they've been searching and will eventually zero in on this planet. Just keep telling yourself that, you dope. I think I can get you back in time. Yes, but... Uh, Look, do you want to hop in with me here? You're doing this because of Liara, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm in love with her. I show it by stalking her daily. I don't think she loves me yet, but... Uh, 
Perhaps with you gone, she will see things in a more realistic light in time. <laughs> well, how can we get my suit into the open? I have some men I can trust. Assassin? This movie is a filibuster. You must never know. Otherwise, we both will be put to death. Two nights a week, I'm alone. In complete charge of the master control center. Can one man handle it? Yes. Then why don't you do it? And on one of those nights in the near future while Sesame is sleeping, I will maneuver Raytown within a distance of the Earth's moon. You think they'll be able to see us? Precisely. They will investigate and find you. Oh no, my pet cicada's in trouble. Oh man, Kenny G's at it again. Go with her. Go with who? What, what do you mean? Oh, with her, okay. What is this? Our network is down. What's happening? The siren means we're being attacked. Attacked by whom? I'm not saying you're mean to me. Attacked by whom? The Solarites. Duh. We've been here too long. They've discovered our position. Who are the Solarites? I have no time to explain. I must help Cecil. Go back to bed, Chapman. I'll wake you if anything happens. What will this do to our plans? Should we call the sitter? We must fight this off or no one will have any plans. Is everyone underground? Yes. Let me go. Now don't talk about your secret plans in front of me. This the hush puppy. <gasps> Hemorrhoids! Get the tux! He's cool mo grandpa. Oh, that helped. <laughs> We're safe for the moment. I'll hit him. I fear they won't give up so easily. Safe for the moment? Well, who are these solarites anyhow? They're from a sun satellite. Huh? For generations, they've been after our universal gravity control because they want to avoid being pulled into the sun. If we don't stop them, they'll eventually attack your Earth. Then let's see you laugh. <laughs> Liara, show him the prisoner. Prisoner? Come. We've got all the episodes on tape. It's a great show. They're just taking them off to daycare while they straighten out their little war. The Beatles are playing here tonight. Aw, oh, puppy. Aw. Oh. So that's a solarite. Yes. He was captured during the last war. The only one of their monsters that didn't die in the attack. When did this attack take place? Several years ago, when Zetha was a little girl. That's when she lost her voice. Woohoo! Yeah! What makes those rocks disintegrate? <laughs> Weenie. It's as if they were hitting some invisible wall. That's exactly what it is. The monster is so strong that it's a smash in the ordinary structure. Now, what you call an invisible wall is really another way that we use our gravitational control. Now, by using a high magnetic field, we can lock molecules so closely together that they form a solid wall. Whatever, it's fine! Woohoo! Big hit at MIT. Where? One of Earth's more advanced centers of learning. A lot of pocket money and short sleeve shirts. I only hope your wall will hold him in check. Yes. He could kill us all if he escaped. <laughs> Life on other planets. <laughs> what a crock. We were always wondering if ours was the only one so blessed. There are many inhabited worlds, but only these fire people bother us. We just need a place to scoot. It's just a Sharpe with a parted afro wearing a pizza slicer. We have been sighted by the enemy. They are forming a concentrated attack pattern six, Vernier index one, two. And six? They never attacked on that one before. They're hurling flaming milk bones at them. What are we going to do? We must try to break up the attack. Thanks, Patton. I doubt the audience would enjoy looking at a lump. <laughs> the worst they'll ever do is hump their legs. Mm -hmm. Oh, my engine light is on. I wonder why. <laughs> and they attack in flaming pet taxis. Oh, I just floated an air biscuit. I'm out of here. Dominos Vobiscum. 
Well, maybe if they didn't disguise the planet as a chicken McNugget, the dogs wouldn't attack it. Don't be afraid, we all have our shots. <laughs> Where's the fire extinguisher on this thing? It's fantastic. We can do one of two things. Scream or run? Outrun them or fight them. Well, breaking up a formation is one thing, but how can you fight them? Do you have a chance? We have to settle that once and for all. Living in constant danger isn't worthy of us. But don't forget, we still have the gravity control. The greatest danger to us is the high-intensity heat bomb. Right. Yeah. They have enough concentrated heat to blow up our planet instantly. What would you do? You make the call. I would fight. And you? <laughs> um, pass. Uh, fight, old guy. Right. That's exactly my decision. <laughs> Not quite, but almost. Let's yeah. try it again, shall okay, we? Okay, sure. Okay, 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 <clears throat> okay, okay. Twink. Um, oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, twink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Lit. Oh. <laughs> Still, we got seven notes in. That's a new record. That's pretty good. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, Mike, Tom, and I saw those little glass arrangement doohickeys they used to control gravity in the movie. Yeah. Sure. And we remembered we shared a true passion for water glass rim music. Oh. And we've gotten pretty darn great at it, too. Hey, Mike, you want to give it a try? It sure is challenging. No, no, no. I just embarrassed myself. Oh, oh, go on. I mean, we've practiced and all. That's why we're good. But we won't judge you too harshly. <laughs> I... Oh, okay. If you all put right. it that way, I'll give it a shot. Okay. That's uh, that's about all I know. It's uh, yeah. you're right though. It's really fun. You know, later on, would you guys uh, give me some more pointers? I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, a lot later, Mike. Uh, right now, we have to uh, feed the cat. Well, 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 get a cat then feed it. Okay. Well, I'll see you later. Well, let him try tackling Twinkle Twinkle Little Star sometime, huh? Yeah, let's that's try right. that, huh? One more time. Yes, yes, let's okay, do it. Okay. <clears throat> Twinkle. Darn! Jeez. Prepare for battle. <sighs> Sharp it's acceleration for it's... attack position. Ugh. Shake and bake, and I death. Wow, tight turning radius on that chicken thing there. So we're just using old six shooters, huh? <laughs> Shooting irons. It's no good. Their defense is too crispy. Pathetic, huh? Oh, don't tell me. I'm out of rocks. Damn. Gently pat these rocks as a sign of protest. On my bark. Woof. We've got to mark this planet. <laughs> huh? Activate the gravity curtain. Or the Venetian gravity blinds. Get off my foot. Remember these people? They're in our film. <laughs> I'm working my magic. Oh, it was a magnificent victory. <laughs> but I'm deeply plagued with regret when I'm forced to destroy. Yeah. If it wasn't them, it would have been you. Perhaps you are right. You're wise, Chapman. 
One day you yes. and Harren will lead our people. Well, I'm uh, grateful, but... I will teach him all he needs to know. Oh, oh hey, it worked. <laughs> Mother Solar, I didn't raise no dummies. <laughs> go on, go on. He's an elderly Solarite. He has trouble with stairs. Yeah. Oh, where's Zeta? Oh, she went to sleep early. <laughs> sleep? I'm very tired. Perhaps the battle was too much of a strain on me. Good night. Good sleep night, well, Sasson. This is a Sustacal with my name on it. I'm going to go drive around and leave the bleak girl. <laughs> I'll just hide out here in Fred and Wilma's house. Ma'am, could you quit writhing on the coffee table? Please. Yeah. Their bed technology is light years behind their space-going chicken technology. Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am, I don't mean to bother you. Do you have any liver snaps or perhaps a vegan script? I think he's been backpacking through Europe. Um, ma'am, I, I realize you don't know me, but I really need to go walkies. Flush, let me feel your nose. Oh, I bet you shed. I shed. You shed? Last call, everybody. Last call. Come on. Okay, okay. Her hair controls the light switch. I touch her hair, the lights go out. Got it. I know. I'll try submissive urination. <laughs> He's basically a cauliflower with a handle and eyes. It smells like wet fur in here. Uh, she forgets she's mute and thinks she's blind. You have a kind face. Yo, word. Here's the ginger you ordered, ma'am. Ah, uh, I can't get away from the lumbering slow thing. Oh, she's screaming her fingers off right now. I'm gonna terrify this man. Oh, I had such a dumb thing on my fingers. You might have heard So, apparently, women are devoid of the fight or flight reflex. Yeah, they only have the fainting reflex. <laughs> women. <laughs> no more frisbee catching. I'm on a whole nother level now. Now, the monster dresses like Carol Channing. Uh, wait, wait, did I leave any clues? Don't, I piddled in the corner. Commander Spot will be very pleased. Where the hell is the elevator? So I got her now, and having the slightest idea what to do with her. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna need a two wheeler. Nurse! Nurse! Okay, 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 everything's cool. I'm not gonna beat myself up over this. Dino, no! What was that? It's over there. Yeah, I guess their raucous post-war celebration will have to wait. Wash my face off with snow. There, found my mark. Good. Oh, father! He licked me all over. Oh, father! What happened to him? I think it was a solarite. Are you all right? I... What happened? I don't know. Was it the solarite? Did you see him? It was terrible. <laughs> I pushed down an old guy for you, darling. We'll build a split level with a doggy door. I'll fetch the paper for you every day. I'm gonna go bark for no reason, lick myself, and eat grass till I vomit, then I'll be back. <laughs> okay, what'd I do? Oh, oh, I'm way out of my league now. I'm going to the control room. No, you stay with me, Ara. Chapman! Yes? How far do you think you'd be if I hadn't called you back? <laughs> go through that corridor, it's shorter. Right. But be careful. I'll and be button your blouse. I'll be oh, Heron. <laughs> oh, 
Ooh, they have dogs. Nathan, are you all right? Um, excuse me, I, <clears throat> I have the element of uh, surprise over you. It's a good guard dog, you have to admit. Okay, hang on. On the way, be right there. Hang on, just a minute. Nice puppy. <laughs> good dog, just let me turn around and present my butt to you. I think you'll find everything in order. <laughs> Place. Anybody could just dematerialize themselves by accident. Maybe they should cordon it off or something. Yeah. Uh, they should scratch his belly till his leg shakes to subdue him. You're it. Come on, I tag you. Oh, hang on, I'm not quite... Okay, there we go. Good night, everybody. Minneapolis rocks. Big hand for the Solarite band. Come on. Shannon is gone, I see. <laughs> Next time we're getting a cat. What a dangerous sign? Rope it off? Anything? Nope. All dogs go to hell. <laughs> we're friends now. Why? I'll assess him. It will be all right. Liara's with him. I'm glad. You still wish to return to your world? Yes, but... Well, then tonight's the best time. You see, the chaos of battle has brought us closer to your moon than we've ever been. Really? It'll be a simple task to maneuver Raton slowly and steadily even closer, and the risk will it not will? be so great because the travel time will be this short. This is fascinating! It will be well within the range of moon's radar. Yes, but we cannot go unnoticed. Come on. Now, as soon as we're within range of your moon... Okay. ...my men will I'm carry your suit out some into socks. the now, if your people come this to invest, we will pull them into our gravity and direct their landing. Meanwhile, wow. you will enter your suit. No! Seal it up so that you're not exposed to our atmosphere and the rest, you know. This is fascinating! In the control chamber. Someone will come for you. Wow. <sighs> oh, I hogged out on a baby carrot. I need to walk it off. Hi. Hey, get any better? No. It's you. Yes, Frank Chapman. But you can talk. Son of a... Great. On my fight, when I thought you were going to be killed, something happened. And after I screamed, I found I was able to speak. Say that. Hey, I'm talking here. I have many things to say to you, Frank Chapman. Like pickle. But it's so wonderful you being able to talk. And I have so many things to say to you. Like, I think we should break up. Well, everything has been terrible. Especially that lunch. Ugh. I think I'll jam my tongue into it. Boy, she is earning combat pay. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. And she's horrified back into muteness. Isn't that strange? You haven't called the police yet. Here in this place, I found perhaps what I've been looking for all my life. Pancakes. And I must leave. Although, everything within me wants to stay. Especially my spleen. My solemn duty to leave. You understand that, don't you? I'm sorry, now I'm deaf. Frank Chapman, I've been in love with you since the first time I saw you. Yeah. And I've never been able to speak a word of it until now. Is he a turn up the cruel face? <laughs> as I know, my love for you is so strong. I can overcome my revulsion. No. I also know that you will leave. I must leave. Hang on, I want to get my gum back. Oh, I see you've been flossing. That's good. The word love means detest, right? Oh, the first thing I ever see in my life, and I blow it big time. Look, it's over. Leave me alone. It's over. Good. You're on time. For once. <laughs> Here we go. Let me hear you say yeah. Another hour and we shall be close enough for you to be found. I'm just gonna drop you off at the bus station. I hope that's okay. Don't, don't. You're smothering me. Ah, delivery for Robert Downey Jr. Lunar Base 1 to Rocket Ship 380. Over. This is Rocket Ship 380 to Luna Base 1. Over. Radar has just picked up a giant asteroid. Identity unknown. Cannot find any record of it in the space charts. The Phantom Planet. 
Give us exact position of asteroid. Nine degrees in northern cluster field, and I have an order from Colonel Lansfield. You are to land on this asteroid and send White to investigate. Immediately, young man. I... I hope you will find happiness back with your people. It would be my happiness. You're over there. You want to live in my habit trail? Frank Chapman, please. You must take the stone. And rub it in your armpits. It will be a good luck charm. Hold on to it. It will help you to go back safely to your people. Keep it. Oh, she's going to just friend him. And remember, Mac. I love you. Yes, say that. Keep it forever. In my junk drawer in the basement. We just confirmed it. A rocket similar to yours is heading in our direction. I hope it won't crash. Don't worry. It will. I have the best men on gravitation control. And I have another man who's coming to help me turn on the oxygen tanks as soon as you're in your suit. No, Amps. Thank you, Dan. You know, we've become friends here. Good friends. Which is why I bring up my missing wallet. <laughs> We would have become friends anywhere. Your planet or my Earth. I wish you and Liara much happiness. This is longer than a Minnesota goodbye. Um, don't call because I don't have a phone. Don't write because we don't have mail here. I don't have email. Look, I'm just really hard to get a hold of. Whew, I thought I was going to see that giant pink tongue coming at me again. Uh, a lot of animals got in here, use it for their toilet. We tried to clean most of it out. Okay, in you go. What the, whoa, check this out. He's nude. Oh, man. Just one more peek. Oh, wow. Whew, he almost stayed. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. My, my thumb is bent back in here. Oh, ooh, my leg is all twisted. Ow! Ooh. Yeah, the movie's circling the drain at this point. Come on, we didn't like these scenes the first time. Yeah. What if his flashbacks lap themselves? Come on, go out, please. Frank Chapman, I've been in love with you the first time I No fair, you can't flash back to stuff we saw ten seconds ago. Chapman. Chapman. You got me gum? White to Beecher. Come in, White. I found Chapman. He's alive. But there's no trace of McConan. Where's McConan? He's dead. He got He kept yapping about beauty, so I shot him out the airlock. Oh, 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 I am so jammed up in my cup right now. Where's Waldo? What about that whole issue? Who? Sasha. What are you talking about? Sasha. Helen. Man, you are nuttier than an outhouse rat. Come on, let's get back to the ship. Hey, you want to hear something funny? I found a little dark-haired woman on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> White to beach her. I'm bringing him in. He seems to be all right. He said McConnan is dead. He keeps talking about other people. I think he's in a state of shock. Do you need assistance? No, Captain. I can handle him alone. Well, okay. You know, Frank, you're a lucky guy. You're going to a nice federal prison. <laughs> this is a wandering planet. Could have carried you anywhere. East Lansing, Crab Nebula, Oxnard. I'm sure glad we found you. Because we ran out of ugly guys. Exactly. All right. What you need is a rest. And a stern lecture about letting your partner die. So, were you small when you were gone? Because you're acting like you were really small. I just want to remind you, this is a Northwest flight, so we'll be sitting on the tarmac for an hour with no beverages and air conditioning, and we're out of meals, and the flight attendants are overworked and abusive, and if you complain, we'll throw you off the flight. Prepare for immediate takeoff. I am preparing for immediate takeoff. You see me preparing? Taking off air tanks is preparing. How do you feel, Chapman? No. I think I'm car sick. I don't understand. Why can't I have my sippy cup? It's unbelievable. We 
get you back to moon base for a thorough examination. And spanking. Do you think you're hurt? I don't think so. You must have been knocked out for quite a while. I mean, we hit you as hard as we could. <laughs> I must have been dreaming. Quite possible you were delirious. The shock of the crash landing of your ship. Ray's gone. Why don't we play the quiet game when we take off, okay? But I just left safe in hand. They gave me rocks and stuff. Well, I got a Grisham novel if I get started on that. They should have gotten her a stick. Such an adorable little face. Yeah, well, so does Paul Williams, but you don't French kiss him. All rockets ready for firing. Stand by for countdown. You guys want to see my rock? The gravity of this planetoid is very strong. We'll need every bit of thrust for our takeoff. Don't worry. I've got extra thrust. I know we're going to make it. Start your countdown. Ten. Nine. Right. Uh, right. Eight. Yeah. Seven. Let's get out of it. Yep. Six. Mm -hmm. Five. Four. Hi. Three. <laughs> yep. Two. Uh -huh. One. Zero. And they die. Houston, we have a moron over. Cut off power. Is that a good idea, Ryan? Power off. The rear screen. Rear screen. Farewell, chunked and formed light and dark meat. A big chunk of suet. Oh, no, that's his face. No, now they'll never believe me. I'll have to kill them all. Even with this, they'll never believe me. An old piece of gum? So long, no less than 95% meat and meat byproducts. They did chicken right. Yes. <laughs> what then will the future reveal? Ugly guys. If this story is only the beginning, is only the beginning, only... Oh, don't take my microphone away. I'm fine. No, no, that means we're going to have to watch it all over again. Yeah, that's great. Hey, thanks, Mike. Man, I wish I could do this myself. Well, hi, guys. Hi, hey, Crow. Hey, um, have you guys ever noticed how I'll see a movie, Snap, lose control of myself and decide I'm one of the characters in the movie and then go out and dress myself up that way. Mm. I don't know if you do that any more than the rest of us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I actually do, Mike. I guess I'm pretty good at hiding it. But but look at me. Apparently I've decided I'm a solarite. Huh. Yeah. And, and you know what's weird? I don't even remember doing this. And it's a very good costume. Mm. Pretty good. Yeah, it is, with the eyes and the nose and all. Yeah, apparently done in a sick, psychotic, amnesiac blackout or something. And for what? Am I am I scary at all? Look, look. Well, well no, you look like a clown. Well, like a fool, right? Well, like a jerk. Like a yeah. jerk, yeah. and that's my point. Apparently, I hate myself. I crave ridicule. Hit me with scorn and derisive laughter. That that makes me all tingly. Oh, hi, I'm Crow. Abuse me, please. Thank you. Cha! Boy. Huh. <sighs> what the... You know, I, I hope it's okay that I talk about this with you guys. I... Oh, no, no, it's very pleasant. This is fun. Well, well, thanks. Thanks a lot, you guys. I actually feel a little better. I, I'm I'm going to go do some journaling. Yeah. Okay. You do that. Good luck. What a dipstick. Uh, let's see what Pearl's up to, shall we? Okay. Sheesh, you think crows, an idiot? Check out Pearl, world conqueror, Forrester's doomsday stupid device. What a pile of... What is it with me? Am I a complete loser? I don't know, Mike. Maybe this whole taking over the world thing is dumb. Why don't you do it or something? Ah, uh, Pearl, there's a mob of agitated villagers gathered down below wielding pitchforks and torches. Uh, should I ask them up? Terrified villagers. A pack of panicked peasants storming the castle. Is it possible they, they fear and despise me and wish me dead? <laughs> I am evil. I am starting to take over the world. Bobo, rain guy, prepare the boiling oil. Uh, yes, madam. <laughs> hey, 
you, stupid kulaks, you think you can bring me down? No way, Jose. You are messing with the wrong evil despot. That's right. <laughs> we brought you a casserole. Welcome to the Lego. Huzzah! Casserole? I'll be right back. Only eat tonight. <laughs> uh, Pearl, if it's any comfort at all, please know that I hate you and fear you and despise you and wish you dead. Oh, thanks. But I haven't got it. Let's face facts. Anyway, thank you for the casserole. <laughs> Did you see what I just did? Girlfriend, those were your instincts. You are evil. I will rule the world. I will. Let's do another one. Oh, why not? Hey, Roger. It's here. Oh, wait. Isn't Bobo down there? I, oh. I suppose we do. You know, better not. Just... Oh. How did that happen? Oh, oh, Just take the time to look at it. Yeah, some guy, McConnell. 